Y'all got one of these little books? Just pick it up and turn to page number 92. And if you don't have one, hold your hand up and somebody will get you one. It's called Dwelling in Beulah Land. I love this old song. And maybe some of you haven't heard it, but you're going to. You need a book. Would you stand, please? Here we go. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sin. And they're small. But the, the, the truth is, we're dwelling in Beulah Land. Sing it, third, uh, fourth, third verse. That's where we're at in it. <laughs> okay, sing it. Let the stormy breezes blow. There cannot alarm me. I am safely sheltered. Protected by God's hand. Here the sun is always shining. They can harm me. I am safe forever in the land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. Bound before 
took life for I am to wear. Sing the chorus one more time. The land I'm living on out there underneath the cloudless sky. standing for prayer. Good fine morning church family. Good to see you back out with us today. We pray that you've come praying before you came. We pray that you've come expecting to gain something from God today. We have Mike Worley with us this morning. He's going to be ministering for us today from Roanoke. And we just want you to be encouraged. Be excited. God's got something for us all. I'm going to ask Brother Herod if he would come and lead us in prayer this morning. Let's pray together, please. Father, I come before you this hour, the wonderful name of Christ our Lord, and give praise and honor and exaltation to your great name because you're the one that has brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You're the one that's put a new heart and a new spirit within us and redeemed us by the precious blood of the Lamb of Calvary, washed our sins and made us righteous in your sight. For it was not by works of righteousness, but by your grace through faith that we were able to be brought into this wonderful kingdom, born again by the spirit of the living God. Lord, help us to be a people that day by day give you honor and thanks and praise because you are the all-righteous one. You're the one worthy to receive all the honor and all the glory because all your works are done in righteousness and truth. I thank you, Lord, for this holy convocation that we are able to gather here today, the liberty that exists in this nation to freely assemble in a place to uh, hear your word and to minister praise and thanksgiving unto you. I pray, Lord, that as Brother Mike Worley comes in a few moments to minister the word, that you would give him a holy boldness. You would give him a divine unction as he stands to speak forth these truths that you have stirred his heart, that he will do it with great conviction on his part, knowing that he's speaking as a spokesperson for you, the word that is forever settled in heaven. The ones that come to sing, give them an anointing by the Spirit of God. May we sense the divine glory of God's presence in our midst this day, stirring us. And if there's any in our midst who do not know you truly, I pray this day you will set them free in Jesus' name, that all the days of their life from this time henceforth, they may serve you with all their heart and mind and soul and strength. Use our lives, Lord. Lord, for your honor and glory, and we give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I think we'll go ahead and take our morning offering. Uh, turn to page 51 with an A behind it. It's called Jesus is My Sunlight. Uh, we'll try to keep it slow enough so you can uh, get all those words too. Any, anybody know this song? Page 51A. Wow, our people don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, as you know. That's kind of fast, but that's okay. Sing it. My path is bright, my burden light, since Jesus came to stay. I have no fear while he's so near to guide me in the way. He is my light by day and night along life's rugged road. And of his love I'm singing all the day. Sunlight, sunlight, on my path to shine. Bringing gladness to this heart of mine. Sunlight, sunlight shining every day. Jesus is my sunlight all the way. We made it through in good shape. 
This light divine that brightly shine, dispelling all my night, will guide my feet along the way into the paths of pride. Will comfort give to all who live within its rays so bright until they reach those mansions in the sky. Sunlight, sunlight on my path to shine. Bringing gladness to this heart of mine. Sunlight, sunlight, shining every day. Jesus is my sunlight all the way. Come out from sin, let's walk within this glorious light divine. And go to that home above where joys will be sublime so glad and free we all shall be within its courts to shine among the saints and angels over there sunlight sunlight on my path to shine bringing gladness to this heart of mine sunlight sunlight shining every day Jesus is my all the way Amen Dusty Lynn has a song and whatever else they put with it for Michigan
We have a quartet this morning. They said they originated in North Carolina at the camp meeting. Where are you at, quartet? They, I asked him what they called themselves, and he said, we're not the hoppers, we're the huffers. So here they are. There's mics, you can turn them on, guys. And this one's already on. We'll be here in a second. Our preacher team. Just real quick before we sing, I thought about the scripture in First John here. Chapter 3, and I don't want to misquote it, so I'm going to quote it. I'm going to read it to you. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called, in the King James it says the sons, but I, I like to say the children of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, John speaking to all of us this morning. Beloved, now are we the children of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope within himself purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Praise God. for a bus <laughs> but anyway thank God for the music amen we have the trio brother Chad
would this morning, would you welcome our speaker for the hour, Brother Mike Worth. <laughs> I'm wired up. I hope I'm fired up. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I thought of that. I said, I said, I got to push that mic out of the way. Thanks for reminding me. Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, top of the morning to you. And the rest of the day for myself. No, okay. I'm thrilled that you're here. God bless your hearts. I thought a minute ago, uh, that brother that was chairing the service last night said he's apologizing for having to leave because he went to work to the guy, to Brother Brad, who's going to be preaching. Um, and, and the, huh? You cannot hear me. All right, maybe so. What about that? Is that better? Okay, and I'll talk a little louder. Anyway, I thought, hey, I lost half my audience and I ain't even got up here yet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, I want to thank Brother Tony for letting me do this this morning. I've um, been here many times before, and it's always a privilege and an honor to see so many of you back that I've come to know over the years. 
uh, through this is your home church and others who are attending because it's camp meeting time. You've come from different parts of the country, and aren't you glad that the, the, the host church, Licking County Church of God, has provided a means for us to be able to do this every year. Uh, I'm just so grateful for the effort that they have made and put forward, uh, and all those workers, those unsung heroes that try real hard to fatten me up again, and I have to try and use a little discipline, but we love you, and I hope I have something here that'll help you this morning while you turn to the book of Luke, chapter number 19. Um, I believe that every service is critical to our walk in the Lord, and that there'll always be, I suppose, a nugget, a tidbit, uh, if not a, a, a boatload of information that applies to us. But having said that, I wonder this morning if there may be some of us who have come to camp meeting, whether you're local or have driven many miles, and you're in hopes that this meeting will turn you around, or this camp meeting will bring about the message that might be a catalyst for the change that's needed in your life. Maybe you're struggling to, to some end or another. I wouldn't dare guess. I don't, I don't know what that would be. But it may be in your marriage. It may be in another relationship. It might be a habit. It might be a conviction you've backed up on or that you need to form. Any number of ways we could come at this and talk about it, but we're going to look at a character that all of us, almost probably without exception, was acquainted with when we was kids in Sunday school, way back in the day, just children. Oh, Zacchaeus, or Zacchaeus. You say tomato, I say tomato. Potato, potato. Whirl, whirly. It's all who's saying it. For me, it will be Zacchaeus. However, in the 21st century, he would be Zach. But we're not going to disrespect Zacchaeus that way. We'll call him Zacchaeus this morning. So as we turn our attention to Luke chapter 19, beginning of verse number 1, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a, a man named Zacchaeus, <clears throat> which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And so he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, quickly come down, for today I must abide at your house. And so he made haste. Quickly he came down and received him joyfully. Well, when they saw it, they murmured that he was going to be a guest with a man that was a sinner. But Zacchaeus, in verse number 8, and our text will be lifted from this verse, he stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him four times as much. I hope this altar this morning may be the place that you can come and meet Jesus after having come down out of your sycamore tree. Because if you have a need this morning that you've been wrestling with, you've been grappling with, demonic forces have given you fits over, I believe that your pew is a sycamore tree and you need to climb out of that in just a few minutes and come down here and let Jesus abide in your house. Oh, God, we pray that you'd help us this morning. I'm so small and insignificant in the scheme of things, but you took this bit of clay and a few morsels of dust and you created this man to be a spokesman on your behalf in this pulpit this morning. I'm humbled, I'm grateful, but I beg God that you'd help me. I need a touch from you this morning, deliver us from ourselves, deliver us from nervousness, and just give us focus. 
on your eternal word and what you'd have us to share with this good audience. I believe because of this message, someone here needs to hear this. So I pray your will will be done in that life. We trust you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Joseph Epstein said this, we do not choose to be born, we do not choose our parents or the country of our birth. We do not, most of us, choose to die, nor do we choose the time and conditions of our death. But within this realm of choicelessness, we do choose how we live. God made us distinctly different from all other creation because we can make choices. The animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the solar system, everything that is a part of the world and our universe as we understand it, acts and reacts by virtue exclusively of its creation. Beyond our creation, God give us the ability to choose between good and evil, right and wrong, and even the choice between victory and defeat. Oh, I pray God will help me to get you out of your sycamore tree this morning. Man, I have experienced that place. Jesus has passed by me, and I've had to come down and let Jesus do what needed to be done that he might be able to abide in my house. Amen. So let's get to it here. There are three things that I believe are critical or crucial to my thought this morning. Now, I will say this, and when I get done reading this, some of you preachers more than anybody else are going to say, if he's no deeper than that, no more profound than that, man, we ain't got much of a ride going here. But I'm going to say it anyway. You will not be any different tomorrow if you're unwilling to change today. Now, that's quite obvious, but people are always, and you've, maybe you've come to camp meeting. It didn't get done in your home church. It didn't get done in prior camp meetings, but you've come to this one in hopes of the change that you recognize needs to be done. But it'll be no different tomorrow unless this would be the day you let God make that change in your life. Now, like you, or some of you, or any one of you, without pointing out or assuming anything, but like Zacchaeus, something was astir. Something was already amiss. I believe he already had an inkling within his conscience and all things that, that was Zacchaeus. For you see, he was living under the law. And he knew that one of them lines in the law said what? Thou shalt not steal. And so his conscience had been pricked. Maybe he lost sleep, maybe not. We don't, we don't know. But, but he'd heard about Jesus. His reputation had preceded him. And here was a guy who could open deaf ears, blinded eyes, bring the dead back to life, and all of these things, Zacchaeus thought, maybe I can get in close enough proximity to him, he might be able to help me. That might be a bit of a stretch, but Zacchaeus went up into a sycamore tree, like the, like the woman with the issue of blood. He didn't try to make his way through the press. He didn't try to capture the attention like those that cried to Jesus for, for their physical condition. No, he climbed up and hoped that he might see and might catch a glimpse and quite possibly get a line on the help that he needed. You've come to the right place this morning to get the help you need. God bless you for being here. And I believe God's going to speak to your heart over the next few minutes. So we need to... <clears throat> Uh, have change affected today in order to be different tomorrow. 
Three things we need to do in order for that to occur. Number one, recognize. Number two, acknowledge. And number three, obviously, change. And I'll give you the tools for that in just a minute. So Zacchaeus, it says here in verse number eight, said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. Zacchaeus recognized what was wrong. Do you recognize what's wrong? I believe that we can become so um, used to, we can become so accustomed to what's wrong, we have a hard time at some point recognizing it's wrong. I remember before I got saved, I just, I'll say this briefly, I had a foul mouth. And it becomes such a pattern of my, of my use of the English language, I didn't even recognize it. I didn't even know it. It, it just spewed out of me like a sewer. What a, what a foul mouth I had. But I just, I just didn't even think about it anymore. I've had things occur in my body, pain, and I'm one of these guys that I really believe in divine healing. And I believe in trusting the Lord, Brother Bartlett, as long as I can without seeking medical attention. But sometimes what that has done is that I, I learned to live with the pain. <laughs> I learned to live with it. And Zacchaeus had learned to live with his ways, but something was happening. Do you recognize, is there something wrong? Do you even recognize there's anything wrong? I may be preaching to a church house of perfect people. <laughs> now we want to be perfect and if but I believe everyone every now and again we, we need to be tweaked a little bit. Especially if we're like Zacchaeus and we know something's wrong. You didn't come here to be entertained. You didn't come here just to hear this great music. You didn't even hear, come to hear great preaching. You came to hear from God in hopes that this would be the camp meeting, this might be the service, this would be the hour that you could come out of your sycamore tree and Jesus could abide in your house. Amen. And so Zacchaeus recognized that. Lamentations 3.40 says, Let us search and try or examine our ways. And turn again to the Lord. So take an honest assessment and look at your life. I'm going to give you one of my closing statements and we'll come back to it. Because it's, it, it just struck me when I read it the first time. It's not deep, but it says this. It is never too late to become who you want to be. Huh? Now note that I didn't say it is never too late to become what you want to be. Big difference between who and what. Because if I, if I have any notion that NASA is going to call me and put me in a space program, I'm delusional. My age, my ability, my agility, all things that define me at this station in my life is not going to get me into the space program. So uh, that's not what I want to be. I may think when I'm coming up 77, I'm a NASCAR driver, but that's out of my league too, so I don't want to be a NASCAR driver. No, I said, who do you want to be? Now, young people especially, this is problematic because they want to pattern their lives after some megastar, some superstar, somebody in Hollywood or the entertainment industry or the rock and roll industry or any other, or the sports world. But that, that doesn't work either. I'm just gonna throw a sidebar in real quick, especially for the young people, because you don't need to be like anybody. Now, you may wanna emulate behaviors that, that are set before you as a good example, there's nothing wrong with that. 
You know, we, we, want, to, we want to follow a, a pattern of good works and those who have said it. But, but here's, what, here's what God said in Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end or to give you hope in your future. God created you unique. So when I say it's never too late to become who you want to be, I'm not talking about becoming like anyone else. But who you want to be. Who do you want to be? In life, in your pursuit, not only young people, now for all of us, I want to be inclusive in this message. <laughs> who do you want to be? We all say, I, I want to be Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. And all those, and that's good. But this morning, we, we want to hone in on how Zacchaeus became who he wanted to be. He didn't want to be the Zacchaeus that everybody was familiar with. Rome hated him because he was a Jew. The Jews hated him because he was a betrayer and a tax collector. He was a, a guy that lived in no man's land. Had few friends. Had little to celebrate and be happy over. So he thought by cheating people, maybe wealth would do that. But something was amiss in his mind and in his spirit. And up the sycamore tree he went. And so the first thing out of the box, he recognized and openly said, because I've done this. He didn't say, I've stolen, so I'm going to give half of it back. But we know he did. Zacchaeus knew he did. Jesus knew that he did. And so he said, it is incumbent on me, or I feel a responsibility, if I'm going to become who I want to be, then what I have to do and what I want to do is give half of everything I own to the poor. You're going to have to meet God halfway this morning. You can't expect God to come and affect change in your life until you come to Jesus and desire and ask for that change. And the first thing you'll have to do is recognize the problem. An honest assessment, again, of what's wrong with where you are. I speak from experience, and I think many people in this room, in this sanctuary this morning, have come through moments such as this, that they have had to search and examine their ways, and upon finding and in recognizing and honestly, openly admitting to themselves and then to God, turn again to the Lord. You'll never be able to do anything for God and be effective in the kingdom of God if you're not happy with where you are before God. That's why you've got a conscience. You, people say, my conscience, I hate my conscience. You ought to thank God you've got a conscience. But I like what Paul said about it, Brad. I desire, I want, I live, all things right at that moment, to have a conscience that's what? Void. Void of offense. Before God and man. Oh my, I'd like to have that. I want to live that. But your conscience is gnawing at you maybe this morning. And there's an offense there. With somebody and between you and God. Further in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5, it says, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. The Amplified Testament reads like this, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you're holding to your faith and showing the proper fruit of it. Wow. We say we have faith, but do you really, are you really in the faith? Because if you don't believe that God can make you who you want to be by virtue of open recognition and surrender of that, then you minimize God's ability to do through and in you what he designed you to do and become. Probably a lot of bad use of the English language right there, but you get my drift. <laughs> so Zacchaeus knew in his own mind, but it's, listen, it's not enough to know what's wrong if you recognize it 
and whisper it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. You don't have to proclaim it from the housetop. You don't need to come up here and say, Tony, can I have the mic for five minutes tonight? I need to confess. No, no, no. But you'll need to recognize that it's your conscience, and before God, you need to do something about that. And so Zacchaeus started out this course, and he knew he had to do something. Now, you're going to have to meet God. And you're going to have to determine whether you're really in the faith you say you are or not. So Zacchaeus, upon recognizing this, then he acknowledges it. <clears throat> Obviously, he's openly spoke to the Lord what he's done or where he's at. and He's not right in his own thinking, evidently. And so he says, and if I have taken, look at it with me if you will, behold the Lord, half my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, his acknowledgement of what he had done. One time, actually more than one time with my wife Debbie, she, I can t all of us husbands, I, our wives say, I know you better than you know yourself. Yeah, well, baby, I've been married to you almost 50 years, and I know you pretty well, too. So, Debbie, I could tell she was kind of off her game a little bit, you know. So I says to her, I said, Deb, I, you know, I'm sorry. If, if I've done anything, oh, she just kind of bristles right about then. If! Oh, man, I know she's going to lower the boom on my brains. If you did anything, you don't know what you did. If I did, I'd be groveling and asking for your forgiveness. What is it? So we have the conversation, and we kiss and make up, I hope. <laughs> Sometimes that's wishful thinking. But anyway, eventually we do. We're still together anyway. So, he acknowledged what he had done. And in doing so, don't misunderstand this in the connotation in which I just put it with my wife. Well, Lord, if, if I've done anything wrong, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, whatever. We, we live in denial. We, we, we live in, in such a, below our privilege, when, when we try to just level the, the playing field of life, if you will, by virtue of, well, I may have, I probably did, but I didn't mean to, so no harm, no foul. Yeah, well, if there wasn't, you wouldn't feel so rotten about it today. You wouldn't have a conscience nagging you that something's wrong, and I need a revival. I need a Sunday morning service. I need a camp meeting. I need something. And, and you're pursuing that. You're attending those. And all the while, you just need to come out of your sycamore tree and let Jesus come to your house. James 5.16 says it this way. Here's what you need. It's not if, but confess your false one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The earnest, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, I know a lot of that has nothing to do with the message this morning other than confess your faults. Now, there's two things implied in this verse right here. Healing is attached to confession, and righteousness is the result of that confession. So you need an emotional healing. You need a mental healing. I've been in the ministry long enough. When I first got into the ministry many decades ago, uh, it was almost, it, it was just in hushed tones, and the church was... Uh, very uncomfortable with mental health issues, and even though they were in the Bible and we would see things in our church, uh, we, we just didn't want to, we just somehow, we, we couldn't gravitate towards the idea that people could be mentally sick and they couldn't help it. Any of the older preachers recognized when the church was kind of wrestling with mental health, and uh, if, if you got, if you got, a, if you, if, if that's your uh, malady, uh, you just need to, you need to get with God. You need to have more faith. You need to get over that. 
Now, if you've got a disease, if you've got something wrong, we're going to pray, we're going to anoint you with oil, we're going to get concerned. But if you've got a mental issue, you just need to get over that. <laughs> I mean, boy, there's great disparity back in the day. But having said that, I've come to realize that all things that people wrestle with aren't just sins committed with the physical body. They've got things in their mind they're holding grudges and anger and bitterness. And emotionally they're torn over a tragedy, over some misuse in their earlier life or something that was done that was in, unjust and unfair. They can't let it go. So in their emotions and in their mind, they're perfectly healthy but for that. And they are up the sycamore tree hoping Jesus will pass by and come and abide in their house. Well, confess that fault. Confess that need. Whisp. I tell you, this is one of my favorite. Come to the come out of your sycamore tree and come up here and whisper in the ear of God. Don't you like that? One of my favorite phrases. I don't know if I thought of it. I'd like to take credit for it, but nonetheless. Whisper in the ear. It isn't my business what's wrong with you. You don't have to confess to me. I can't help you. But if you come up here and whisper in the ear of God and tell him how you're hurting, why you're hurting, where you're hurting, and why you need and what you need and what you think it's going to take from God to get it done, he'll, what will he do? Well, get over it. You should know better. No. He'll whisper back. That still small voice that may be talking to you now will whisper back in your ear. Further, you remember David said to Nathan, I have sinned, didn't he? The prodigal son, I have sinned. James 4, 17, to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it ought to be. It is sin. Listen, friend, I have the distinct privilege of standing before you this morning and not doing anything more than being a catalyst to get your attention, to come out of your sycamore tree and get the help that you've needed for some time. You've been wrestling with it too long. The devil's held you bound too long. You've been trying to ignore it too long. You've distracted yourself with other things, not sinful things, but you've just been busy. You've just done things out of sight, out of mind. The only problem is we've got to go to bed sometime. We've got to lay our head on a pillow sometime. It's going to be dark sometime, and we're going to be all alone with us, our thoughts, our hurts, and our God all alone. There in those moments, you're haunted, you're taunted, demonic forces come, and you can't wait to fall asleep and wake up the next day and try to forget all of that. Again, you'll never be any different tomorrow if you're unwilling to come out of your sycamore tree, if it were, as it were, today. Well, after Zacchaeus recognized Lord, half my goods I'm going to give to the poor. And he knew why I told you. He'd stolen it. Because I've taken things from people, a false accusation, I need to make a little bit of restitution. And he said, I'm going to restore unto them four times as much. Change. Zacchaeus knew he needed to change. I tell you, the key element, the key element of salvation, of getting, of getting saved, is recognizing you're not where you need to be before God, and you want and you need to be, and so you need what? I need to be changed. Some change has to come. A new creature in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. So we understand from the very inception of our desire to serve God, it's about change. 
And if you've been honest along the way, on some level, beyond what we're talking about right now, you've recognized the need to change as God gave light in your life. And you grew in grace. That's easy enough. We, we think, well, not always, but we do that nonetheless. But somehow or another, we come to this place in our lives and this particular circumstance, a situation, a temptation, or by whatever means it has been brought to our lives and our mind and our hearts and our emotions, and it just maybe consumes us. I'm, do, do I dare say there may be some here this morning, you live your life not in the sunlight of God's love, but in the shadow and the darkness of the devil's cloud. Just this cloud over your head, this dread over your life, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Man, I wish I had that, some would say. Victory in Jesus. Boy, I wish I could find that, others would say. Listen, friend, this morning, like Zacchaeus, he knew what he had done and he, he was despised for it. There were the naysayers that were looking to find fault with it, but it didn't care to him right about now. He wanted Jesus to do something for him. Now, you say, I'm not sure I believe that. He was in a tree. He didn't know Jesus would see him. And so he just was going to let Jesus go by. I'm of a mind to believe that if Jesus wouldn't have stopped and said, Zacchaeus, come out of the tree, Zacchaeus would have said, Jesus, and dropped himself in the middle of the road. I believe that there was a stirring going on. There's a stirring going on in your heart this morning. The Lord's dealing with you, and he's telling you, today is your day to effect change in your life. So, so let's talk about that for a second. Just one verse I'm going to use. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Wouldn't you like to do that? Wouldn't that be a good thing if you could change to that point where you could let your light shine instead of letting it be so diminished? And so dim. Now listen, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to alienate you. I don't know you're hurt, but I know you're hurting. I don't, this, this, this old cliche, I feel your pain. I don't feel your pain, but I know you have pain this morning. I'm going to just share briefly Forgive me if I said, I don't think I have. But many of you, I do know that my mother died when I was two years old. And my dad remarried, and I had a stepmom. And, and Okay, so we go on. And over the years, I, I, I wondered, my mom, I wish I could have known my mom, you know, blah, blah. The, the things that a guy would, would, would say. And I always wonder. Like some here, you, you may wonder, why was I put in this place? Why did I get in that position? Why did these things have to unfold like they did? Now, my loss of my mother could have been a, a, a very hurtful thing because I won't get into it, but things along my life, and especially my teenage years, and difficult as life was, and I was, and uh, just different things. I can't get into it, but just trust me, I had this emotional uh, and psychological trauma uh, that was done and was unfolding and I was hurting <clears throat> and I got saved and that wasn't totally lifted. God came to me one day just to show you how God works and why God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Had, had my mother never died, I wouldn't be here today. You say, you don't know that. Oh, but I do. Because my dad and my mother, her history was, was Arizona. And had they stayed in Michigan, the church they were attending and different things, it was not affiliated with Church of God. They may have crossed paths with it, but I don't know. But my dad remarried, and the woman he married, my stepmom, her dad said to her one day, come 
and listen to this preacher, this fireball out on Sheridan Road. That's the north side of Lansing, Michigan. My mother went and heard that preacher. My grandfather and her started attending, and mom dragged us kids. My dad eventually in that church got saved. Guess who the daughter of that fireball preacher was? My wife, Debbie. My mother died so I could have Debbie. My mother would say, it was worth the price. <laughs> but you see, then Debbie and I's marriage and my affiliation with ministry and my call and all things. So if you're questioning this morning, why did that have to happen? Why did my life go that way? Why did God allow? Maybe that's your hurt. Maybe that's your question. Maybe that's your pain this morning. And it's not that you've robbed, it's not that you've cheated, but there's this cloud as there was with Zacchaeus. There's more to life than living with the bad choices you've made because of your circumstances. Does that make sense to you? And so, I don't think, thank you God for taking my mother. But thank you, God, in working your perfect will in my life through the circumstances that were afforded or that came to me. All things work together. I know you don't see it, but for some reason, somehow, some way, if you can come out of your sycamore tree and let Jesus abide in your home this morning, you'll come to fully understand and appreciate and submit and say, not my will, but thine be done. And so, in closing, it is never too late <laughs> to become who you want to be. Now again, forget imitation, forget emulating, forget patterning your life after anybody else. Who do you want to be? Internally, you, you would say, well, I want to be a, a righteous, an upright, holy man or woman for God, or young man or woman for God. I want to have, I want to be a mind that's uncluttered so that I can have a fixation on the Word of God and the things of God. I want to have, I want to be a person of joy. And I'd like to know a measure of happiness. There are two different things, by the way. Happiness can be fleeting. Joy can be remaining. But nonetheless. And so you begin to hone in on who you want to be. And if you want that not bad enough, if you crave it and wait on it long enough, if you wait for the stars to align themselves <laughs> and all these things will work out for you, <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about being Zacchaeus this morning. And Jesus has surely passed this way this morning. I believe, I believe Jesus is near to us. And in all the things that control our lives and over which we have no choice, we not only can, we do choose how we live. Is that not right? We do the way you live. Some things in life are by chance and circumstance, but most of the time, there lies before us, right and wrong, good and evil. But for Zacchaeus on that day, what lay before him was the tragedy and the travesty of a broken life because of broken law and a hope for a brighter future because of a man he'd heard about from Galilee that came to heal and forgive. 
And Zacchaeus was a broken man by now. And he needed healing. And he needed forgiving. Maybe there's someone while the piano player and our song leader comes back up or whatever they're going to do. And you would say, I got to tell you, Brother Mike, all righty, <laughs> it's, it's me. But I, I just don't know. You're already barking up the wrong tree. You're already headed in the right direction or wrong direction. As much, we don't apply this verse the way I'm going to, and so you scholars forgive me if I'm out of line theologically, but we always say that the Lord will, oh, I lost it, so I don't need to say it. Ever happened to you, Brad? More than once. If it comes back to me, I'll share it to you. It's a profound thought, I thought. While they come up, I will say this then. Don't let the devil, if this is your third or fourth or fifth or tenth or hundredth time in a church service where you continue to wrestle with the hurt that you've been carrying for so long. Why don't you just come and lay that down the feet of Jesus. The Lord would like nothing better this morning than to alleviate you of that burden, dispel that cloud, to return the joy that's been missing for so long. And I'll tell you this, it matters little to me if you've prayed about it a thousand times before today. The sin, someone once said, isn't so much in falling down. The crime lay in not getting back up. And I hate that you don't feel that prayer was answered. I'm, I'm sorry you're still hurting like you are this morning. But maybe, and only say maybe because I don't know your faith. I don't know your commitment. I don't know your confession. I don't know between you and God, as was Zacchaeus and Christ. I don't know what that conversation would be. But I could only hope and would like to think that this morning, this would be the last attempt you'll ever need to make because victory will come to your life. So I'm going to ask you with this one more time. Would you come out of your sycamore tree and would you come to Jesus? Zacchaeus was above Jesus. We lofty sometimes in our pride or our thought process and even thinking I can't so I'm not going to trust the Lord for it. Oh, shame on you. Come down. Not just out, but come down from your sycamore tree. And get on eye level with the Lord this morning and whisper in the ear of God. And he's going to whisper back. And you may, for the first time, hear the words that the devil has deafened you to for months, if not years. And you will, like many of us, have a marker in your life where change was affected. Would you stand with me? Father, we thank you, God, for the privilege of preaching this morning as best we could. I hope it's been a help and that someone who may be hurting in great need. It's, I know life, they think, may have been cruel to them. I know the devil's just, just been evil to them. But I know, too, that, Lord, sometimes we're our own worst enemies because we can't fully surrender. We can't fully, honestly openly acknowledge we're too afraid or ashamed to talk about it even to you and so we just believe at some point that ignorance is bliss letting it go out of sight out of mind no harm no foul we'll be fine after a while when we're not fine at all so God heal these hearts relieve them of their pain and their sorrow 
forgive any sins that might be confessed. I know you will and fully perform your will until it's completely done. In Jesus' name, may we come down out of our sycamore trees. Amen. Brothers. Page 247, 247. If thou wouldst have the dear Savior from heaven, walk by thy side from the morn till the evening. God, heal their hearts. Heal their hearts, Lord. There is a room Bless her heart. that each day you must follow. Bless their hearts. Humble thyself. That's what we need to do. Come down. Come down. Others may need to come. Indeed. Indeed. He will not walk with the proud or the I got to tell you, I am compelled to speak to this. I'll be very careful. But for you young men and you other men in this building, pornography is one of the most pervasive, one of the ugliest, one of the most difficult challenges because of the ease with which it can be accessed that's taken its toll on so many men. Now listen, men. This may be your struggle. Jumping on that website and hitting the right button and a world of exploited women blows up in front of you. Marriages are ended Homes are broken, lives are shattered, and young men per pursue lives of lust that becomes a ruin to relationships in their future. I know what I'm talking about. You don't need to tell me, you don't need to come up here and tell, but you come and whisper in the ear of God that you are that this is your battle. It's every, almost every young man's battle. The way society dresses, the way women are flaunted, the advertising that's done, the things that are available. Church, we need to pray for our young men and our married men. It is just unbelievable. The statistics within the church house. And if there's a preacher in this building that hasn't had to deal with it, you will. You will. Because some man or some wife is going to come and tell on their man or some young man or some young woman because of what the young man tried or did do, born out of pornography, you'll have to deal with it. But if you're a male here this morning, and I know we've got no gender-confused people here this morning, you know who you are. You young men, you grown men, you need to come and talk to God and say, God, deliver me from lust. Deliver me from porn. I'm, I'm just telling you, I had to deliver my soul. Uh, there may not be a guilty individual in this building, but God just, he poured it on me. Somebody needs it. Now, I can tell you what's not going to happen. There's not one man going to come to this altar right about now. So what do we do? I want five men or women. This is not your battle. 
No, 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 no. I want some people in this audience to come and pray. A few people. And then I want others who might need to pray because this is your battle. Or you've been unafraid. This may not be, pornography may not be your problem, but it's another and you've not come. Young ladies, other women, you may not have come. I want you to come. But so as to hide and obscure the guilty, I want some people to come forward. Just a few people come and pray. And anybody who says, it's your moment to step out. Hide in the crowd if you want to. If this man, boys, if this is your problem, step in the aisle and come pray. You see, God knows anyway. We don't need to know. So in your obscurity, you whisper in the ear of God. And ask God to deliver you. It's so pervasive. You women pray for these young men and these men. And pray for one another. And then pray for yourselves if that's why you're here. We're going to sing maybe one more verse and a chorus, and I'll let you sit down while these continue to pray. God, have your way now. God, have your way. Just as the Lord did the world's Indeed. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I'm going to ask you, Norm, just stop right there. I know the course is coming, but I feel led to do this. Just keep playing. You at the altar, I'm going to pray with every one of you right now. There may be a young man or a, 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 an adult praying about what we've talked about. Some of you women, you've carried emotional hurt, and you're more emotional, you're emotional creatures. The devil knows how to beat you to death with your emotions. Others may just have a burden for something else, but I'm going to whisper a prayer with all of you right now and believe God with this good audience. And so, Father, we come to you before this group of people and ask that your that heaven would open up and the the showers of blessings would come upon those who are confessing. Those, Lord, who are coming clean, as we used to call it. Those, Lord, who have been carrying this, this burden and this cloud over them for some time. And they, they don't want relief. They want deliverance. They won't want to ignore it. They want it to be gone. So I pray in the name of Jesus, rebuking the devil, commanding he get his filthy hands. Often these children of God and give them the victory that for so long has eluded them. Come into their lives in full total and full surrender then may they, Lord, know the joy that is theirs in the Lord, born out of their obedience like Zacchaeus. You went home with him. His house was changed. His life was changed. He'd never be the same. May those who came out of the sycamore trees around this building this morning and have come to Jesus. Now may you abide in their home until you take us to that eternal home. In Jesus' name we commit their lives for your sake, the kingdom and eternities. In Jesus' name again we pray. Amen and amen. God bless your every heart. Bless every heart who's humbled themselves before God or prayed for a burden in their life. Thank God forever. Can we sing Learning to Lean? I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Can you give us that key? Yes. I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus.
Yes. Would you be seated for just a minute while these finish praying around the altar? We don't want to minimize their need and their burden this morning. Are you leaning? Say, it doesn't imply much strength if you got to lean. You'll find more power than you ever dreamed when you learn to lean. <laughs> Amen. I've done all I believe the Lord would have me to do. He's telling me just be quiet and go away. <laughs> so I'm going to step down and let the good brother close this, or Sherm, if you want to do another course, whatever you guys feel led to do. Thank you. God bless your hearts, every one of you. Kind attention. I know the Lord will make a way.
I just want to say something before we break away. In an atmosphere like this, you can receive what you need from God. The power of God is here to heal. The power of God is here to deliver. In an atmosphere like this, you can receive what you need from God. I'm just, I just want to encourage you to step out and receive it. Can we sing one more hymn, one more stanza? And then... I don't know what God's going to do, but I know God is moving. I don't know how you shut down such a service like this. We just can't do it, brother. But we thank you, brother, for bringing such a timely message full of truth. I think we felt a yonder wind from, a, from the glory land today come through this place. As she would begin to shout and hands would come up over here, it would just move across the building. God is mighty and God is available to us all. In closing this evening, uh, we want to stress there will be an offering.
today or this evening to um, defer the camp meeting cost. And so if you could, go out and get a second job today. And do what you can to bring a sacrificial offering today. Uh, there has been $50 found outside around the swings. Uh, we want to thank the person for their honesty. That's a, a good raising right there, just having honesty. You could have pocketed 